Uh, in the morning at 8.30, because we are wanting to just stay connected with you. And so um, whether you're at work, on your way to work, whether you're at home, uh, we're so thankful that you have joined us. Uh, this will be a time where, again, we just stay connected. Uh, that, that's important for us. Not necessarily a time where a whole lot of information is going to be shared, uh, but where we're going to point people back to the Word of God. His word is eternal. We're in the midst of changing times, and yet we just need to be grounded in things that don't change, and God's word never changes. And so we're going to have a worship time together, and then we'll come back for a little Devo moment, and then we'll pray at the end of that. And please don't worry, I'm not going to be leading worship, so Ryan Christian is here with me. They're even going to mute my mic at the time that we sing praise, so it'll, everybody's safe, I promise. So would you worship with us, please? Let's sing. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Sing that again. Our hope is in Him. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems, when darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every eye and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the same. sound Oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless to stand before the throne Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the same fills the night it cannot hide the light whom shall I fear you crush the enemy underneath my feet you are my sword and shield though troubles linger still 
whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can say, you will deliver me. Yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. And nothing formed against me shall stand. Faithful, you are faithful, you are faithful. I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side, the one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Thank you, Ryan. Much better than I could have done on my own. So I was watching American Idol last night, and there's no way I could ever do something like that. I'd get laughed out of there. That is true. That is true. Well, like we talked about earlier, um, it's really important for us uh, to keep our eyes on Jesus. And, you know, he is, um, he's our cornerstone. I mean, he's, everything starts with him in our lives. We know who goes before us. We know who's behind us. And so just those great reminders. And so when we get in those spots where we're a little fearful or we have some anxiety, cast your eyes back on him. And so that's what we're going to do this morning. I just thought it would be a great way to start this off, uh, this kind of prayer time together in the midst of uh, this coronavirus season, if you will. I'm not saying that's the best name, but it's what we got for right now. But Rick, the video that he sent out at the end of last week, he ended with Philippians 4, 6. And I thought that'd be a great way for us to start with our time together. And so it says the following, I'm gonna be reading from the NLT. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Great verse for today. But if we're being honest, it has the opportunity to lose us right off the bat. Don't worry about anything. Really? How in the world are you supposed to do that? How, how am I not supposed to worry about anything? How am I not supposed to worry about what's going on right now? And, and you know, I, I, I've known this verse for a long time, but there's been times where I'm like, that's not even helpful because I, I just don't even think it's realistic. What do, you, what do you mean don't worry? What do you mean don't be anxious? But then if you keep reading the verse, it leads you to where God wants you to go in the midst of those anxious moments. 
Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Instead, talk to your father. Talk to your heavenly father. Talk to the one who made you. Talk to your dad. He wants to hear from you. In those moments where you're uncertain, when those moments when you need reassurance, he's there. The Bible says that he's actively looking for those that are looking for him. He, you are not going to catch him in the midst of doing something else and him saying, I, I don't have time for that right now. No. Your prayers bring him great delight. For all you parents that are out there, you think about even a, a text that you might get from a, from a college student that's your child. And it may only say something like, I love you. Or I hope you're having a great day. And when you hear that from a loved one, when you hear that from your child, it changes your whole day. When my daughter, unsolicited, just says, hey, dad, I love you. Man, it's one of the best days ever. And so that's what God wants. He just, he, instead of worrying, pray to him. So don't be anxious about anything. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Okay, Lord, so I'm going to pray. What do I pray? The verse tells us, tell God what you need. Man, so often we like to go to God and we like to say, hey, God, I'd, I really want this and I really want that. And can you make this happen? And can you make that happen? And, and he's saying, all right, hold on a second. You're in a time where you're a little bit unsure. I'm so thankful that you're coming to me and you're talking to me. And now, I want you to examine what's going on in your heart. I want you to examine what's going on in your mind. And I need you to tell me, what is it that you need? And in this moment, the transformation, see, that's the whole thing about a relationship with God is it transforms you. Not only did it bring life from death, but in the midst of all of that life, you're being transformed and it's happening in the midst of this. Bring to me, child, bring to me, son, bring to me, daughter, what it is that you need. And so as you're wrestling with that and as you're beginning to realize what is it that I need and now I'm not as focused on some of the other things that are going on, where does the confidence come even in being able to do that? Well, what does the verse tell us? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Thank him for all that he has done. In other words, remember whose you are. Remember all that he's done for you. I mean, in these times, I take great comfort in looking back on 9-11, back in 2001, and just the uncertainty and the fear and all of the things that came along with that. And not only did we have the events of the day, but are things being mailed to us and are there going to be other attacks and just all of these different things. And yet God proved to be faithful through that. I look back at the recession of 2008 and 2009 and just all of the fear and all of the anxiety and all of the things that came through that. And yet God's proven to be faithful. He always is. And so if I get anxious, I'm going, all right, Lord, I'm not supposed to do this. Instead, I'm supposed to be talking to you. So I need to tell you about what I, what I need. And so you're transforming me even in that moment. But then in the midst of that, I'm like, oh, yeah, because this is who I'm talking to. And if I do it from a real personal level, back in 2008 when my daughter was born, at the end of that, my wife had some very strong, uh, difficult health concerns and was diagnosed with postpartum cardiomyopathy. And, uh, and so basically her heart uh, was enlarged and too big and we had a consultation that was about a heart transplant. Uh, we were told that she would be on medication for the rest of her life. I mean, all of these different things that um, were gonna be a result of a godly desire of wanting to be parents. And I can remember walking into, my wife was telling me about this last night, her name is, is Nola, but just remembering of walking in when we were kind of getting the first diagnosis of all of this. And it was really hard, really uncertain. And um, we prayed. And Nola remembers me praying a point where it says, Lord, we're to be thankful in everything. And yet I don't know what to be thankful for in this moment. I want my wife to be okay. And so we just tried to live that out as hard as it was. And the amazing thing is, is that God healed her. And she's not on any medication. She doesn't have any of those limitations that they talked about. Obviously the whole heart transplant thing, all of that, not did it go away, but it went away at a much quicker rate than anybody ever anticipated. And it's just in these moments when he says, don't worry about anything, but instead pray. Tell me what you need and remember 
all that I've done for you. And that's my challenge for you, Hills family, today. Look back. Remember the things that God's done for you. And you're going to find that there's going to be a peace that comes over you. Because the next verse says, Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Will you pray with me, please? Oh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we want to be thankful in everything, and we don't want to be anxious in anything. And yet we're fighting that. We're battling that. And so we're turning to you. We're turning to your word. And we're praying. We're talking to you. Lord, there may be people out there that can hear this prayer right now that are saying, man, I don't don't feel good about praying. Could you just help them realize that it's not a special formula, just a special father that we get to talk to. And it's coming from a special child. That's them, a special creation. That's them. And just give them the confidence and the assurance that they can turn to you in the midst of anything. And what you're asking in the midst of that is just that they would examine what it is that's going on And when they begin to tell you what it is that they need, that they need in that moment, doesn't have to be what they need next month, doesn't have to even be what they need tomorrow. What do they need right then and right there? And Lord, as they have those moments where they may doubt, are you even listening? Are their prayers even worthy of making it all the way to you? May they then be able to look back at their life And just see how faithful you are. That you are in control, you've always been in control, and you always will be in control. And all of a sudden, as they look back and see the ways that you've moved in their lives, all of a sudden they realize he does care. You do care, Lord, and you are listening. Truth is, you care so much that you sent your son. That he died on the cross for all of us. And regardless of whatever temporary situation we have, nothing changes that. Nothing changes the cross. So Lord, give us the peace that you so promise when we turn to you. Lord, I lift up all of our frontline healthcare providers. I pray for supernatural protection for them, Lord. Lord, I pray for all of the teams of of experts all over the world that are working on treatments and working on vaccines and all of the things that are needed in the midst of all of this coronavirus ordeal, Lord. Lord, would you move in supernatural ways? Holy Spirit, please give revelation. Expedite this entire process. Lord, I pray against the spread of the virus. Lord, we're going to do wise things. We're going to be good neighbors. We're going to listen to the experts. We're going to, we're going to do things like social distancing and we're going to do things uh, and limiting our gatherings and, and all of those other things, not because we're afraid, but because we're helping those that are saying they need help and that's our local officials and our healthcare system. And all that's great. But Lord, you're better. So we're asking for you to intervene, Lord. Lord, may you hear the cries of our heart. May this virus die out. May we supernaturally become immune to it. Whatever that looks like, Lord. I know you don't need me to tell you, but we want to highlight it anyway, Lord. Because we know that you're capable of that. We know that you're undefeated. And so, Lord, we're asking you to move. Lord, in the midst of this time uh, where our lives are just different, it's not that we're now not in control, but it's that the illusion that we ever had that we were in control is being revealed to us. And can I just confess to you right now that I'm so thankful that I'm not in control and that you are. Lord, we trust you. 
we will always trust you. Our faith is strong and our faith is being strengthened. And even in the midst of that, at times, we have our moments where we look at the waves, we look at the wind, and we start to sink. But all we have to do is cry out. All we have to do is readjust our eyes back to you. And the amazing thing is, is that when we do that, your hand is already outstretched. And so, Lord, for everybody who's listening to this, whether it's live now or it's later in the day, supernaturally, Lord, give them the capacity to keep their eyes upon you. We love you, and we pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here. We will be here again tomorrow uh, at 830, and uh, we'll keep these things going into the near future uh, just so that we can stay connected, but that we can be redirected back to God's word each and every day. Be looking for those opportunities. Having peace and hope in the midst of this is supernatural, and others are gonna take notice. And so be ready to give an account for the hope that you have. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you soon.